The Seastar S50 is a great little telescope, but how does it compare with a camera and a long telephoto lens like this one, specifically when taking photos of the sun? And how big would the totally eclipsed sun be in the frame? I set to find out since I'm going to be bringing both a camera and the Seastar with me. Here are the two setups, a Seastar S50 and a full-frame Canon mirrorless camera. For reference, here are some photos of different aspects of totality scaled to the 600mm lens with the mirrorless camera. For the sun's full disk, which is what you'll see during the partial phases, both are great. Here the Seastar S50 and the Canon are at full resolution. This Canon, though, has a 24 megapixel sensor. Let's crop it to the 2 megapixel that the Seastar has. As you can see, it's more competitive with the Seastar than one might realize. Now, sunspot details aren't quite as crisp. That might be a function of the solar filter on the Canon, though. But what about during totality, you say? Let's start with the framing. These are actual photos from a solar eclipse scaled to the Seastar field of view. R remember, you would have to take the solar filter off the Seastar, or any other camera for that matter, during totality. I think the Seastar may work during totality. The exposure will certainly need to be adjusted manually. The inner corona and prominences seem quite doable. However, the massive caveat is that the Seastar currently has only limited controls for adjusting exposure. Whether or not it's sufficient, I'm not sure. It seems like prominences in the inner corona should be possible to photo. Those features are close in brightness to the filtered sun, but we'll have to see. Now, if you're planning on using a mirrorless camera with a telephoto similar to this one, you should be all set. But if you aren't sure where to start, watch this video next. I'm going to end it there. This was only going to be like a two-minute video. I don't need to spend 10 hours on it. Or do I?